doing in this lesson is we're going to be communicating from the client side to the server side. So we've got a few functions set up within the Google Apps script. Uh, so one of them is called fun and one of them is find my user. Within the JavaScript of the client side, we've add chat some events to some of the page elements. So the two buttons that we have on the page, they're going to run different functions and using the Google script run, we're going to run the find my user which is running the code from the Google script. And within the Google script, we're returning a value that's going to be picked up with the with success handler method and then passed to the add user function again, which is going to be within the Google script side and sending that information over to the client side JavaScript. So here we're using the add user and that response value coming from the Google script. We're going to update the input value with the result. So effectively adding the session active user into the input field. And the second function is going to be that we're going to be calling to the fun one, getting whatever we've got from the input value of the client side, sending that over to the server side, connecting to the spreadsheet, adding the value to the spreadsheet, and then ultimately returning a value back to the client side and this can be any value so we were logging it as a date but we can just set and return back the value and with a successful connection we're going to run the success function which is going to update the h1 text with the value if we fail it will also re update the h1 text with the failed value so this is in case the google script doesn't run properly then we can get the error code and being output on the page. And this is all done within the client side. So effectively, we're able to refresh the page. And if we want to add a user, so Lawrence 1000, we want to add that to our spreadsheet. And then we get the response back, coming back from the client, from the server side, back to the client side and updating the H1. We can also get whatever the current active user is with the other button click and triggering that event. And then again, we could send that information over to the spreadsheet, add it into the spreadsheet as a row, and then also get it returned back from the server side. So that's all coming up in this lesson and a whole lot more. This lesson, we're going to be exploring the client to server side communication. So let's go ahead and open up the editor, log into the Google account, open up the editor, create a do get function. And then here, we'll create some HTML content that we want to return back. And that's going to be using the HTML service. And in this case, we're going to create a file, an HTML file, and we'll call it output. And it's just a regular HTML file. And we'll have some HTML tags there and close off the H1. So select that from the Google Apps script using the service. And we're going to create the output from file. It's not from the template file, but from the file itself. And this is how we're going to create the communication. So select the file, and that's going to be using the, where the name output. And this is expecting a string value. And that way, we can return that as the HTML object. So let's go back out into the web app and we'll run the code and we see we've got this content being called and we're seeing the result of the code. In the last lesson, we saw how we can use scriptlets. Uh, so there's also an option that you can use the Google script run. So this is calling a function on the server and this can be done from the script itself. And this is done within the JavaScript files or the JavaScript script tags. So if we want to use the Google script run, and then we just need to select the function that we want to run. So this function will run in the background. I'll just call it fun one and invoke the function with the rounded brackets. Save that. And let's go back into the Google script site and we'll do fun one. And what do we want this function to do? So this is a function, just like any other function within Google Apps Script. And within Fun1, we want to do something. So let's go ahead and we're going to add to the spreadsheet. I'll just create a quick log here. 
and we want to add to the spreadsheet. So this is the selecting using the spreadsheet app. Open by ID and let's specify the ID and then get sheet by name and the sheet name that we want to use is the log. So that will get us the sheet object. Let's uh, get the ID of the spreadsheet. So every time the web page opens, we're going to track something within the log. And that's going to be doing by running the fun one. And that's going to be done from the client side where we're executing that fun one function. So we're getting the spreadsheet. And then within the spreadsheet, append row. So we want to add into the row. We'll just write logged right now. So run and execute fun one, go into the log. So we get this logged value. We can also pass a parameter done, save, and then pass in instead of done, we can get the value here within fun one and pass that value into the log. So let's uh, refresh the page. And so now every time it runs, it's going to add that into the log. We can also track the current time directly into the spreadsheet. So with the date object, we can track, track the current time. So let's run that again. And this time we're tracking the date in the second column by appending the row. And we can make the full interaction. So if we had an input field and then we had a button and that button was called adder. And this is, can be all done with JavaScript. And I'll set the value to Lawrence and we've got the button for adder. And let's uh, connect the button with JavaScript. So using the document query selector, select the button tag and then for button on click we'll run the function and the function that we're going to be running is going to send the done so save that let's refresh the page and see now every time we click it we're passing that information over so let's uh, also get the value from the my input. So demonstrating how we can pass client side content over to the server side. So only have just the one input. So I just select the value from the my input whenever the button is clicked and runs the function. So now when we click it, and we got to refresh it because we've updated the client side code. So when we refresh it, that's going to be adding that now. So whatever we've got here within the input field, it's going to be adding it to the spreadsheet from the web app. So let's say you can do a communication from the server side to the client side. And you can also run on the client side. So getting the success handlers. So if it is successful, then we can run a, another function on the client side. So going back to the client side, if we had a function and we'll call it success so it'll take back the response value and what we can do is we can output it into the h1 tag so console so h1 value and selecting using the query selector select the h1 element so this is just so that we can write to the h1 so whatever we get back as the response we're going to set the text content of the HTML as what we've got for the response. So in order to run the response, so if we do get a with success handler function, and then the name of the function that we want to run, which is success. So chain together the Google script side function. So now what's going to happen is whenever this successfully runs, on the callback, 
we're going to be running the success function. So if we're returning a value here, then we can populate that with the returned value. So since we want to do the date, and that can be our returned value. So let's uh, refresh and I'll see what happens. So now we're going to send the value of Lawrence 5 to the sheet. So we've got it logged there. And then the response object is going to be the current date. So that's just being output there. You can also capture the failures. So you can run it with the failures. So if something goes wrong, you could capture that. And that's going to be with failure handler and then what we want to, I'll call it fail call. So we'll run a function called fail call and then we'll throw an error there that uh, we'll call fail call. So if we fail with the request, so let's say we're making a request to fun two, and if we run a failure on that, so trying to run fun one, if we have a, uh, an error in the code, such as this, or it can't return back the element, the ID. So just add in a few X's there. So it's not gonna, this time it's not gonna return back. So what happened is it returned back the error that we got when we were trying to make the connection. So we're able, unable to get the open by ID of the spreadsheet because we don't have the right ID value for the spreadsheet. So we can also capture failures on the client side and handle those as well. So if we want to populate it, so let me add another button to the page and I'll give this one a class of button or call it button two, get user and then close off the button element and I'll select this as button two. and get the element with the class of button two. Let's add an event listener to button two. And we can use the on click event as well. So running the anonymous function. So what we want to happen when button two gets clicked. So we wanna return back and get the user value. And we'll have the success handler as well. So run with the success handler. And this actually is going to be a different function. So this will be add user, which will run. Find my user. And that's the function that we're going to run on the server side. So we need to update all of these and add in the right functions. So those are just placeholders right now. And we want to return back a value so we can get the session and get the active user. And from there, we can get the email address of the active user. So we're gonna be returning that back and pick that up within a function that's gonna be called the add user function. So within the function, add user. So this is gonna be the response back that's being returned back from the add, from the find my user function, which will be the user name and what we can do is we can select the input value and populate that and set that with whatever we've got back as the response value. So let's uh, refresh and now we should have two buttons. So this should be get user. So it returns back the user's value from the input field. So that's how you can use the client to server side with the Google script run function. And that's run within the JavaScript code. So go ahead, try it to get more familiar with what you can do with it.